for people like us who've come in like oh it's australian day let's celebrate and then you find there's a big group who doesn't want to celebrate and if you say this they get actually offended so like oh okay what do we do and i thought wow what a perfect day to actually celebrate and respect um, our First Nations people. Adelaide Mosque is connected strongly to the Afghan Kamalis. There's a big history which has not been told to anyone. The Afghan Kamalis, as they are called, when they came in, obviously, they, like any other migrant, they came into a new land with no family support. So these Aboriginals were their support. They provided them family, they provided them with community support, you know, and they welcomed them. And that's a big historical fact which neither the Muslim community nor the general Australians or even for the Aboriginal people know about. They married amongst themselves, uh, had generation of people even till today who are from those people. So we're trying to now say, come to our mosque on this day. We respect your opinion. We've got a shared history. Let's join hands. Let's take it forward one step at a time, see if we can make a difference. We all have our own individual viewpoints of Australia Day and for me this was the right thing to do. My great-grandfather, Ghulam Badullah, came as an Afghan Kamalia and he married into the Aboriginal community. From my understanding what my family has told me, they had a, a quite loving, respectful relationship. He provided everything that she needed. Um, he had a good home, good wealth, they had four children together and he was quite honourable and a dignified man. In Islam we are taught that there is no superiority, superiority between being black or being white or being any other colour. You're, you're based or you're judged by God based on your good deeds and how you treat others and how you go about the land. And being a devout Muslim man, my great-grandfather, did not think he was better than his black Aboriginal wife. The Kamalias came here in the 1860s as a contracted group of people. They came from desert regions themselves in their own countries of Afghanistan, Northwest India, Baluchistan, which is now Pakistan. At the port in Baluchistan, uh, the, there was a camel that was going loose and crazy and he tamed the camel and that's when the British colonizers were there at that time they noticed that this young man and how he tamed the camel and they put him on the ships and said hey we need you in Australia. When they first came here they were taken to Beltana station and from there they walked with their camels into the desert so over decades they walked further and further inland. Now they would have crossed the countries of indigenous people and the the purpose of the Camaleers was to set up an infrastructure that was much more resilient than bullock teams and horses. So they would have to know where water is. They weren't given maps. They may have been told directions by a station pastoralist. But to actually know where water is and know that it's going to be there the next time you bring your camels would have brought them into contact with the people who lived in the countries of the Aboriginal people. I think the common thread for um you know, the First Nations communities and the Muslim communities is that we're collectivist cultures. So we don't just think as individuals, we think about the betterment of the community, the betterment of, you know, all our brothers and sisters and aunties and uncles. And, you know, we literally do have villages bring up children. You know, Aunty Mim talked about all the different people that would stop in and that she'd have to go and collect eggs in the morning so that they could have a big cook up. There was always a curry on the stove. There wasn't any judgment. These were people that were traveling through that for whatever reason, they needed support and assistance. And I feel like both cultures have that, that care, you know, and, and that understanding and that, that way of being able to accept people for who they are. A man called Faiz Muhammad, he took it upon himself to become like a foreman of the Camelias at Beltana. But when they moved up to Maori, he remained their foreman and gave these men some sort of sense of community leadership. He then decided that because these men could never get back home, they could never afford their wages to go back home on ships that took two and a half months to sail, um, he would find a piece of permanent land where they would build a permanent mosque, even though they had their own mosques in Mari and Kulgadi and Broken Hill, they were temporary. He wanted a permanent mosque which would be like a home away from home. 
So he, he chose a piece of land in the Adelaide City area, in the southwest of Adelaide City, where the land was much cheaper. He convinced the mullah of Kulgadi, where there was a big Kamali community, to come to Adelaide and be the first mullah here. That mullah helped set up with an architect the design of what a mosque should look like. And eventually they built that mosque on that land. And Faiz Muhammad wanted that to be a place for all the Kamaliers to know that at the end of Ramadan, when they have their festivities or when they're leaving, waiting to get a ship from Port Adelaide to go home, they had a place that was their own and no one would take it away from them. Khan wrote many times to try and get naturalisation in order to buy land and was knocked back at least on seven occasions. And I think that was a similarity that was happening, obviously, between Aboriginal people and, and the migrant people that had come into Australia. They were up against the bureaucracy of Australian policies that really stopped them from living a full life and being able to, to experience the things that we can experience now today. There was always that respect that one did not try to eradicate the other, that both of them had felt the oppression of living within the British Empire and both had that similar experience. We've got a good history where these two very different cultural background people came in, lived together without compromising their own culture values and, you know, it was a peaceful, successful story. Why can't we replicate that again? As he invited me, and I'm a global sister, and I was absolutely um, thrilled to do it differently. What I wanted was that it was really clear that my welcome is delivered with my hair wild, because I'm a wild woman. And I asked Azzy if after, after I finished my welcome, if we could do an exchange. And Azzy offered to um, choose a scarf for me. And I thought it was really significant that I have uh, my, my sister girl, um, drape me, anoint me, as my emu feathers anoint me, and then for her to place uh, my feathers back. And what it says is that we can walk in two worlds. To actually have um, First Nations elder opening her heart, wanting to embrace our community, um, respect our community, um, meant the world to me, and I know it meant the world to our community because it's not something that I've ever seen happen before. This is a good platform to actually reconnect. If anything, it'll reconnect the Muslim faith, um, you know, particularly our history here, um, and the First Nations people. I tell people I'm very proud Aboriginal, I'm very proud Muslim, and I'm very proud Baluchi Afghan. With I, all my identities complement one another. I, I try to look at it as a way, an opportunity to educate others that we're all not the same, we're all quite diverse and different. Being welcomed is one of the biggest helping hand that any community can do. So I can see back then when there were less people and you were not even allowed to intermingle with a certain group of people, then all of a sudden there's a big population who open their arms for you, open their homes for you, you know, welcome them you in. So what kind of feeling would it be for those people? From my migrant background, I could say I would have loved to have that happen to me even at this age and time. So I think so we now being settled in a position, have somewhat acclimatised to Australia, can pay back big time, opening our doors. And this is the first step, I think. Yeah, I'm, I feel really proud to be who I am. And I know that, that my own personality comes from, you know, the these people from, from the knowledge also that I have of who they are helps me to see my way forward. There is a real strong just generosity of spirit amongst uh, my Aboriginal and my, um, my Afghan family, absolutely. It's an ancient relationship between Afghans and Aboriginal people and I know plenty of Aboriginal people are super proud about it. I want them to retain that with pride. Both sides, we can have it all, we can.